Let's able to lift God's name one more time in worship. Amen. 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 And we know that that it's the will of God that that we prosper and be in good health. God says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to, to prosper you and to keep you, to give you hope and a future. Amen. Those are the plans that God has for you. And we know that whatever's going on right now, the best is still yet to come. Amen.
O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Thank you, you may be seated. I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lived in me. Satan had me now. Teaches. If you, if you want to teach, 
Marsha, Elder, Elder, Elder Reeves will let you, and we encourage all of all of us to just come to Sunday school. Get that number and just dial it because we we're so blessed and, 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 and we enjoy it. We all talking at the same time because we're so eager to just talk about the Lord. So so come to Sunday school, and I won't ask you to give because. I know you're doing it, and we just pray that you're doing it out of love so that the Lord will bless us. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we come before you, Lord. We just want to say thank you. Father, we, we realize that it was all your goodness that, that brought us thus far. And Father, you kept us in your name. Continue to say thank you to our diaconate because it's spring now, so it's time for spring cleaning and mowing your yard and raking leaves and getting your house in order. And we thank our deacons because they, both men and women, are here every Saturday and they could be at home doing what they need to do around their homes, but they're here at the church working for the Lord. And we thank you because we couldn't survive without you. So thank you for the beautiful job you're, you're doing. And I only have one announcement, and that is that the session will meet on Tuesday night before the third Sunday. The reason we're meeting on Tuesday instead of after church is because the last time we met after church for those who wanted to meet after church, so this time we'll meet on Tuesdays for those who want to meet on Tuesday before the third Sunday. And we have business to take care of, so make sure you're here. And Pastor, I'll turn it over to you because I don't want to take all your time talking that you want to use for giving us the word. Amen? Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We thank God for you this morning. It's a joy to be here and, and you. Amen. Uh, we, we're just thankful to be here. Amen. And again, we want to... Um, wish um, my wife, thank you for reminding me, uh, a happy uh, retirement. Let's give her a good morning. <laughs> Amen. She's not out of it yet. I got plenty of work for her to do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, the Drake and Lyons family extends birthday uh, greetings to Mother Tessa Lyons who will celebrate her 91st birthday on Wednesday, Wednesday, March 30th, amen. Amen. God bless you, Mother Lions, amen. We thank God for you. We'd like to ask you to include in your prayers um, a young lady, uh, Let Letitia Robinson. She's at UAB Hospital. She's related to family members here at the church. And uh, she had an aneurysm, and she's going to be having a, a major procedure. So we're praying for Sister Latricia. We will be praying for her. We're praying again with thanks, with praise in, in the Lord for Deacon Carl and Mother Earlene Harris, who celebrated their 44th anniversary. Uh, amen. March the 31st. We're asking you to be praying for Sister Shelby Jean Miller and her husband, Charlie Miller Jr. Sister Shelby has been very ill and she's going through a lot of procedures, so let's continue to pray for her. We're happy to, to see Mother Cora White with us today. Let's give her a prayer. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Sister Lois Lewis, Brother Franklin Lewis, Mother Alberta Jones. Sister Marguerite Miller, uh, Mother Lucille Miller, Mother Perlene Johnson, who had a surgical procedure uh, about a week and, a half, week and a half ago. So let's keep her in our prayers. 
Mother Marie Jacobs, uh, Dr. Dolores Smothers, uh, let's keep her in our prayers, Mother Catherine Robinson, uh, Sister Patricia Moore, Elder Willie Jamar, Sister Beatrice Jamar, and Brother Antoine Stevens. He's in a Hansel Hospital. The Lord has brought him a long way. He's in room 1841, I believe. So let's continue to pray for Antoine daily. You might not remember, know him personally, but he is the, the son-in-law of Deacon Briggs and Mother Briggs. And so uh, that's family to us as well. So, you know, if it's church related, it's all related. Amen. So let's pray for him and pray him up. Pray him up. Amen. He's down, but the devil can't get the victory. We're going to pray him up in the Lord. Amen. God said pray him up. Amen. So let's continue to pray for all our sick and shut in members. Every one of them. I didn't call every name, but all of them that's listed, everyone in this church that's sick, let's remember them and let's keep praying for them. And remember, we're getting close to Palm Sunday and Good Friday and all that, and then the celebration of the Lord's resurrection morning. So we want you to be enthusiastic about it and be excited about it because it's something, it's a big deal, it really is. But whenever we think about what God did for us, it's a big deal. It's never going to get old. It's always going to be new because it's a big deal. Every time we think about it, we've got to cross over, but we can't cross that bridge by ourselves. We're going to need Jesus to take us across. And so when we know that, that he is able, he's capable, and he can do it. And we need to be excited about what he's already done. Amen. And what he's going to do. So at this time, we're going to hear again uh, musical selection. And we'll continue on in worshiping of God. Amen. Amen. Find favor in your 
we thank you, oh God. And we walk in agreement with what Bianca just sang and what Daryl just played. We want to be where you are. Got to be where you are. Father, right now, I'm just asking you to let your covering angel descend down at UAB. Touch Sister Robinson. Give her a special touch. Raise her up again. We speak, Lord, that she will live and not die. To declare the glory of God. Father, we speak life in her right now in the name of Jesus. By your power. By your word. By your authority. We speak it right now, Lord, in faith. We don't have to be in you and me. We speak it right now. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for these who have come. This is the assignment for today. The these are the ones who come, Lord, to worship you. Thank you for the words, Lord, of confirmation through Ella Marcia in Sunday school today. When she said, you're looking for us to put our hearts in it. Not just our heads, but our hearts, our minds, our souls, our bodies. Think about it, consider it. Think about you all week long, every day of our lives. And even when there's a few amount of people here, let's praise you anyway, intentionally, Lord, because you're worthy of it. You don't stop us from breathing. Whether there are few or many, you keep us breathing. You keep us inhaling and exhaling. So we say thank you. Now, Lord, we just ask you to forgive us for our sins. We pray, oh God, that you will have mercy on us and forgive us when we have not done all those things that you said do. And then when we have not intentionally attempted to please you. Help us, Lord. Show us, Lord. Give us illumination. Let us see what it is that you would have us to do the rest of our lives. You didn't just put us here just to be here until we die. You gave us purpose. Now, Lord, we pray that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. I give honor to God who is the head of each of our lives and to Jesus Christ who is the head of the church. I thank God for the Holy Spirit, the believer's guide. And I thank God for our worship leader, Elder Dr. Humphrey, our assistant, Reverend Strawbridge. Thank God for all the efficient elders of this church, the deacons, and the godly women. We thank God for the ushers. We thank God for those who are singing today. And we thank God for all of you, God's children. Amen. And to my wife, we thank God for you. I thank you for you. And I thank God for every family that's represented and the young, the young people that's here. Amen. Your working is not in vain. and Your learning is not in vain. Your living is not in vain. God has a time set for you. Amen. And he's going to use you in a special way, in a mighty way. And I thank you for going on in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to do something for me. I want you to get this word out to as many as you can today. I don't know how you would do it, but you know how you do what you want to do on social media. You know how you do that. I don't want you to do it for me. I want you to do it for God. Because God has a word, and he wants as many to get this word as possible. Not only does he have a word, we need his word. I need it. He gave it to me first. And I tell you, it almost shook my foundation 
when he gave it to me. It almost robbed me when he gave it to me. But he said, I need this to go forth. I don't want you to preach what you want to preach. I want you to preach what I want you to preach. And I want it to go forth. It doesn't matter whether they want to hear it or don't want to hear it, receive it or don't receive it. You just preach it. That's your, that's your assignment. You preach it. So I call your attention. There's a word from the Lord in the book of Isaiah, in the first chapter, the first 10 verses. And we'll find these words. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and they ask his master's creed. But Israel doth not know. My people doeth not consider. Ah, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revoke more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no sound as any, but wounds and bruises and petrifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with on me. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and Gomorrah. We should have been like unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Hear the words of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. The word of God for the people of God. I want to preach with the help of the Holy Spirit from the subject, God's case against Judah. God's case against Judah. And if I were to use a subtopic, it would be if you don't know me by now. If you don't know me by now, God's case against Judah. The Holy Spirit has guided me to use the title of a song that was written by Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. It was recorded by the Philadelphia Soul Musical Group called Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. It was recorded around March 27, 1989. If you don't know me by now, God's case against Judah. Chapter 1 of the book of Isaiah bears the summons of God's indictment and invitation. God states his case and offers a cure or a settlement that Judah can live with 
and that God can agree with. Amen. This word is one in which the prophet Isaiah serves as the spiritual court stenographer for Almighty God. Isaiah ministered from about 740 to 680 B.C. for about 20 years. Yes, he spoke to both the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. After Israel's fall to Assyria in 722 B.C., Isaiah continued to prophesy to Judah. This period of Israel's history is told in 2 Kings uh, chapter 15 through 21 and 2 Chronicles chapter 26 through 33. Isaiah was a contemporary of the prophets Hosea and Micah. By the time of Isaiah, the prophets Elijah, Elisha, Obadiah, Joel, Jonah, and Amos had already completed their ministry. By this time, Israel had been in the promised land for almost 700 years. For that first 400 years in Canaan, judges ruled Israel. And these were spiritual, military, and political leaders whom God raised up as the occasion demanded. Then for almost 120 years, three kings reigned over all Israel, Saul, David, and Solomon. But in 917 BC, Israel had a civil war and remained divided into two nations, Israel to the north and Judah to the south. Up until the time of Isaiah, up until the time of Isaiah, the kingdom of Israel, the northern ten tribes, had some 18 kings, all of them bad and rebellious against the Lord. The kingdom of Judah, the two southern tribes, had some 11 kings before Isaiah's ministry, some good and some bad. In the time of Isaiah, Israel was a little nation and often uh, caught in the middle of wars between three superpowers, Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon. As Isaiah's ministry began, there was a national crisis in the northern kingdom of Israel. The superpower of Assyria was about to overwhelm the kingdom of Israel. During the span of Isaiah's ministry, as a prophet, the southern kingdom of Judah was faced with repeated threats from the larger surrounding nations. Many modern scholars think that, the, that uh, there was more than one author to the book of Isaiah. And they used, they used the term uh, Deutero-Isaiah and Trito-Isaiah, uh, the Isaiah school. However, the New Testament indicates that there was only one author of Isaiah. In John uh, chapter 12, verses 37 through 41, John quote from both the first part of Isaiah and the second part of Isaiah. And the part supposedly written by two or more different Isaiahs, and John specifically tells us it was the same Isaiah. The New Testament quotes Isaiah by name more than all the other prophetic authors combined. The book of Isaiah is filled with many wonderful prophecies of the Messiah telling about the person and work of Jesus Christ some 700 years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. God's case against Judah. The Lord brought a, a serious complaint against Judah. The Lord had Judah on his court docket. The Lord, yes, complained and said, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. This is the Lord's doing. 
I have nourished and brought up children. They have rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner. And the donkey knows the hand that feeds it. But not my people, Judah. My people do not consider. My people are a sinful nation. People full of sins. A brood of evildoers. Children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They have walked off and turned their backs on me. Don't that sound like 2022? Y'all will wake up in a minute. Hear, O heaven, and give ear, O earth. God called heaven and earth as his witnesses against Judah. The leaders and the people had resisted his will. And God now stated his case against them. We might think of heaven and earth as a jury that God presented the case before. Romans 8.22 says, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Creation is waiting for the deliverance that will come when the Messiah rules directly over all creation. When God's people disobey, we might say there is a sense in which we delay that resolution of all things. So heaven and earth have an interest in our obedience. I better say that again. Heaven and earth has an interest in our obedience. We think we can just do anything. And that God is going to be pleased. Amen. And we've done wrong for so long we think it's right. Amen. I have, I have now... Uh, yes, shed, shed and, and, and uh, uh, yes, I've nourished and I brought up children and they have rebelled against me. The, the leaders and the people of Judah were like rebellious children who never appreciated all that their parents did for them. The parental complaint, after all I have done for them, they treat me like this. But we have treated God even worse. That any child has treated their parents. The ox knows his owner and the donkey is master's crib. But Israel does not know. The leaders are, and people of Judah were not like dumb animals. Such as the ox and the donkey. They were dumber than dumb animals. The ox at least knows its owner. But Judah didn't even know who owned them. The donkey knows who takes care of him. But Judah didn't know who took care of them. No animal has ever offended or resisted or rejected or disobeyed God. The way every human being has. Any animal is more a faithful servant of God than the best human. This is a snapshot of the desperate condition Judah was in but didn't even realize it. We can be in bad shape with God and don't even know it. Long as people are genuflection and smiling in our faces, we think we're all right with God. Why should you be stricken again, God asked. You will revolt more and more. You'll get worse and worse. The whole head is sick. And the whole heart faints from the sole of the foot even to the head. Nothing but petrified souls that will not heal. Wounds, pulsarated, will not heal. Unless the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remedy, we would become like Sodom and Gomorrah. Lord have mercy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a sobering thought. You see, we, we, we can offer God all kinds of religious rituals and ceremonies, all kinds of religious services, and he may hate it and consider it an abomination. And perhaps in the midst of all the calamity described in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 5 through 9, Judah thought the answer was in religious ceremonies. In their ancient version of church attendance and a few dollars in the offering. 
But if their hearts, right. Emma Marshall, were changed, humble, and surrendered unto the Lord, it made no difference. Without the right heart, God hated that ceremonial service. He said, you may as well stay at home. If you walk in and your mind is not stayed on me, if your mind is not on me, if your heart is not in me, you may as well stay at home. Kept the cover over your head. Right. <clears throat> when sinners are under judgment of God, they will more easily be brought fly to their devotions than to forsake their sins and transform their lives. God says, when you spread out the ass in your hands, and that was the posture of prayer in that ancient culture. Instead of praying with their heads bowed and, 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 and yes, and their hands folded, they would pray with their faces turned up towards heaven. And their hands Spread out to heaven. So when they pray, the Lord says, I will hide my eyes from them and I won't hear them. I'm going to stop my ears. Up. The Lord offers a cure or a settlement for his people, Judah. I've reached my conclusion. We got a Judge that comes on TV now at night, the play judge, Steve Harvey. And you know what Steve would say when he's ripped through? through? I, I don't need to hear no more. I've reached my conclusion. That's what God was saying to Judah. I've reached my conclusion. I'm done with it. I'm done hearing from talk. I'm, I'm tired of hearing talk. I'm, I'm tired of you talking under your breath. I've heard enough. Now here's my settlement. I've reached my conclusion. This is what you can do. And it, this is something that will work for you and it will work for me too. God. That's what God said. Number one, you, 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 you wash yourself and make yourself clean. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. But God, wash yourself and make yourself clean. I smell the filth of sin all over you. That's the first thing you do. evil of your doings from before my eyes. I don't care who didn't see it. I saw it. And I still see it. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Number three, cease from doing evil. Stop doing evil. Just stop it. Stop all your profanity. Stop the way you live. All that wretched stuff in you, all that hate in you. Number four, I want you to seek justice. Five, I want you to rebuke the oppressor. I want you, number six, to defend the fathers. And number seven, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are like red, like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you will be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. I reached my conclusion. But if you refuse and rebel, you should be devoured by the sword. Now, 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 we don't worry about no swords in 2022. We we already saying that. We already thinking that. We ain't worried about no sword. God, God said, you don't understand what I'm talking about when I say you're going to be devoured by the sword. Something's going to happen to you. 
it ain't going to be pretty. Now, I'm giving you a chance. I told you I've reached my conclusion. Wash yourselves. Make yourself clean. You know when you're clean. Come clean before me. I don't know how God gave you that this morning. We weren't even talking about that in Sunday school. That's why God let me know it was him. Because I was needing a confirmation. Marsha came out of nowhere and said what she said. She said, but it's got to be the heart. You can't just worship it. You can't just start planning and say, all oh, for Easter. And just thinking of it. Oh, for Christmas. And she said, that my grandson gave me that one. She said, my grandson brought that up to me. And we do it all the time, don't we? We come to church just like that. We just get up. And, and, and that devil that's in me, he come with me. I don't try to tell him to get out. In my mind, in my heart, in my thoughts, in my thinking. And God's in the background. I can't even raise my hand and praise God. And God's don't raise your hand. Ain't no point you raise your hand because you're not praising me no way. You more honest than everybody when you don't do it. Because you don't intend to do it. But when you intend to do it, can't nobody stop you. Can't nobody stop you. When, 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 when you, you got me on your mind. Can't nobody stop you. Can't nobody stop you from loving you. If you, got, if you love somebody, they can't stop you from loving them. They might not want you to, but it's the love of God in your heart. I'm in you. You in me. I'm telling you what you can do. Wash yourself. Make yourself clean. Turn from your evil. Learn to do good. You haven't learned it yet. All this time. You, you're smart, but you haven't learned to do good. Rebuke the oppressor, the fear of the fatherless, plead for the widow. The corruption of Judah's leaders and people was shown in that broad treatment of one another. Many centuries later, the, yeah, along came the apostle John. And John repeated the sense of Isaiah's message. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? People of Judah wanted to say they love God by their religious ceremonies. But the Lord cared more about how they treated other people, especially the poor, the marginalized people, people that folk walk by every day. Come now. Come on now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. The Lord invites his people to come reason with him. What he offers us isn't just offered because he is greater than us and has the right to dictate whatever terms pleases him. God's direction for us is reasonable. It's smart. It's the best way to live. It's it's madness to reject and resist the God of infinite wisdom, infinite love, infinite grace, infinite mercy, infinite power. True reason will drive any honest person to the humblest adoration and submission towards God. The angels surrounding the throne of God's grace are covered with iron which speaks of their great ability to perceive and know God created them that way. According to Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, these are perhaps the most intelligent, uh, yes, rational beings God ever created, and they spend every moment of their existence lost in total praise, total adoration, total surrender to God. This is where the highest reason will drive us. It is 
just plain reasonable to follow God. Let's be reasonable. The Lord offered a repenting, humble Judah. Yes, yes, true and complete cleansing from sin. That condition of sin would be transformed from deeply stained to become completely white. John 3.16 tells us why. It tells us how this cleansing comes. Oh, we know that it comes because one dark Friday afternoon at a place called Calvary, a man named Jesus took upon himself our stain of sin, our guilt, and God judged sin perfectly and completely in Jesus. We can be accounted white as snow, as white as wool. There is tremendous hope in God's forgiveness. We really can be clean from the stains of sin. Our good works could not clean the stain. Our best intentions could not clean the stain. Our good, yes, our, our, our good ability could not clean the stain. Our suffering, our hurts and pains and how folk and hurt us could not clean the stain. We really have, have we really is, uh, can have a break with the past, and, and that's what God is trying to do today. He wants you to have a break with the past. He is trying to give us a breakthrough. We need this breakthrough. You've done everything you can to get the breakthrough, and you can't get it, and I can't get it, and we keep on aspiring. Then we just give up and kind of just go along every day, just go through the motions. Just come in here any kind of way. And, and leave and say, I wouldn't praise God today. What did you do? The whole person said, what did you do? I didn't hear you open your mouth till you got outside. What did you do? I'm not saying you had to do what I did. You're not saying I had to do what you But what did you do? If you said you praise God. Now, I'm, now, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm praising my car. I'm sweating like everything, praising my car. Right. Now I'm praising God. Teach you how to forgive. He'll teach you how. 
tell him what you're going to do and what you ain't going to do. You're willing to serve him because you understand now what a privilege we it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what needless pain we want. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Families will get along better. You think you're getting along now. When you give yourself to Christ, your whole self to Christ, the fact that we see a lot of difference. Everybody will know you've been changed. Everybody, your neighbors will know it. You take down the hedges from your neighbors. And you say, good morning, neighbor. What? You speak, you're talking to me? Yeah, good morning, my neighbor. I love you. My sister, I love you, my brother. Me? Yes, I love you. Then you'll be able to say, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I can see with a hope that is steadfast and pure. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy over my soul. Like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. You'll be a mother for the motherless. And you won't go along and get, go get mad because your mother's gone. You say, I got a mother. I got a mother since mom's been gone. I got a dad. Since dad has been gone. I got a friend that sticks closer than any brother. Do y'all know? Yeah, he, he's the seed of Abraham. He's the son of me. Stone hewed out of a mountain. A big and in the humble land. Do y'all know? Ain't he all right? Do you know it? What fire? A please call him. He saw how dirty I was. But what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make Edward Addison whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All precious in that flow. It washes white as snow. No other thought I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Do you know him today? He's a healer. Yeah. David said, yeah, you know, I walked through a valley of a shadow of death. I don't have to fear no evil because he went with me. Lord, the staff, he comforted me. Have a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He goes on my head and all. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy. I don't have more doubt about it. Don't follow me all the days of my life. And I may dwell in another house. Not at one for two angels. I'm going to dwell in another house. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord. Not just sometime. Not just for some ages. Yes, when I've been there 10,000 years. Right shining like the sun. Oh my good God Almighty. Thank you Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. That's not what I tell you. One star Friday afternoon. The sun refused to shine. Yeah, because the master of the sun was hanging on the tree. And he said, Father, 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 why have you forsaken me? Jesus, no doubt, remembered hearing God's amazing voice. A few days ago, he said, this is my Beloved son, and whom I'm also pleased. Yes, father, nevertheless, my father, I made you a vow. I said I'd hang in there, I'd stay here until my dying hour. And oh, father, I want you to do me a favor. Yeah, I don't have much, I don't have much left, but here's my spirit, here's my spirit, I'm going to commend it in your hands, oh my father, I want you to take my spirit before I breathe my last breath, oh my father, oh Bible said he gave up the ghost. 
of his head and the locks of his shoulder. Jesus died. He died for your sin and he died for my sin. Jesus died and said religion is nothing but love and by this shall all men know that you By the love you have for one another, by the love that you have for one another, you ought to be concerned about your brother John. You ought to be concerned about your sister Barbara. Oh yes, you ought to be concerned by the least of the least. You ought, you ought to be concerned about that man struggling, trying to fix a flat, and he had nothing to replace it with. But maybe of times you ought to be so concerned that you go in your pocket and you talk to your wife and say, "Can we help?" Sister so and so, our brother so and so, you, you, you ought to be able to take somebody by the hand and give them your fellowship in your faith in God and tell them, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. What are you praying for me for? That the peace of God that passes all understanding will dwell richly in your home, among your family. And I pray that you will pray the same for me. We need one another. We need, we need the Lord. Yes, at Jacob's well, you don't understand, you know not what you worship. I know what I'm worshiping. Jesus said, because I've come from above, and I tell you the time is that the Father seeking such that will worship him. And the time is true worshipers must worship. The Father in spirit and in truth. And Marsha broke it down. She said, From the heart, from the heart. The old folk used to say, What comes from the heart will reach the heart. From heart to heart and breast to breast. Do you? We thank God for you today. There might be someone. God said, I've been with you a long time. And if you don't know me, by now, this will be a good day to become acquainted with Jesus. This will be a good time to say, Lord, I want you to take me on me as your child because I know you're real and I got to be real with you I got to come clean with you Jesus opened the doors a long time ago and he even stood at the door and said behold I stand at the door and I knock. Anybody's qualified. If you can hear, you're qualified. If you hear my voice and you come and 
open the door. The knob is on the inside. If you open the door, I'll come in. And house up with you. You with me. There might be someone here today. God knows what we need. He knows what you need. He knows what I need. But all of us need something. But if you want God to satisfy you real good, He can do that. Every now and then I'll ask God, satisfy me, Lord, like you did when I first gave you my life. See, because every now and then we need a refresher, Lord. We need a refresher every now and then. We need God to refresh us. I don't care how much gas you put in that car. After a while, you're going to have to put some more in. So every now and then we need the Lord to fill us up again. Refill us. So I ask you today, Jesus died on the cross. God raised him from the dead. He got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hands. So if you're here today and you want the Lord to free you up. You want the Lord to give you a special touch. He'll do it. But you got to come forward. My dad used to say, and I didn't know what he meant. I was a little boy, but I heard him say something. God said, if you take one step, he'll make two. In other words, he'll come. He'll meet you. There's someone here today. There's someone here today. Don't you worry about everybody else. Don't you worry about a thing. You just make your mind up, Lord, I want you to do this for me. You don't even have to tell me what it is. But if you want God to do what you know he needs to do for you, I want you just to come on, come up front. And sit, sit on that seat there. I'm not going to ask you nothing about it because God already know about it. But by just you being obedient, he said, obedience is better than the sacrifice of lambs. God can do it for you. God can do it for you. If you don't have a church home, if you need somewhere that you can grow and stay strong in the Lord, and the Lord keep you that way, why don't you unite here? We're not going to turn you back. We got plenty of room. God can do it for you. Whatever you need God to do, are there others to come? We're not going to try. We're not trying to hold you up. Everybody got somewhere to go, but we don't know how much time we got to get there. Not really. We don't know. But right now, we're on God's assignment. Are there others to come? I'm doing, being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Something has been troubling you all this past week. And now you've got an opportunity. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you right now. He's speaking to you right now. Let's have a seat. Amen. Let's have a seat. Amen. Are there others to come? Are there others to come? God's been good to you. God's been good to you. And you... You don't know how this thing's going to come out. You don't know how it's going to come out. You don't know how it's going to play itself out. But you know if you put it in God's hands, if you entrust God with it, he'll bless you for it. Are there others to come? Are there others to come? Are there others to come? Trust God with it. God can do it. God can do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's plenty of room. Amen. Just find you a seat. God can do it for you. He know what it is. He know, don't, don't let that worry you. Don't let it even concern you. Tell the enemy, don't talk to me right now. I'm talking to God. Amen. Are there others to come? God can do it for you. He know what your heart's desire is. He know the end from the beginning. I'm tearing just a little bit. I'm doing this intentionally. God said, if you want to come, if you want to come, amen. If you want to come, come on. Don't let nothing stop you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Eternal and loving God, our Father, because these have trusted you in faith, not me, but because they've trusted you in faith, God, not doubting you. I'm asking you, Lord, to move down the lanes of their lives. I ask you, Lord, to free up all the traffic, Lord, the traffic, Lord, that comes their way. And Lord, give them a lane of their own, Lord, to come on down the road of the King's Highway. And I pray, oh God, that you smooth that road for them. 
I pray, oh God, that you would make new those roads with potholes. Make them new, Lord. Because you said, behold, I make all things new. I pray, oh God, I thank you and I receive the words from your servant, Ella Marshall Readers, today. She didn't speak directly to me. She spoke to us all. It was not a popular stand that she took. It wasn't even trying to be popular. Lord, she's trying to be faithful. And she spoke your word, Lord. You even spoke it through her grandson, Lord. And now, God, I have been a benefactor of that. I've been, I've been a beneficiary to that. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for her grandson speaking those words that we have to plan. Plan spiritually. Plan. Think on God. Now, Lord, for these who come, you know, Lord, what's on their minds. You know what's the matter. You know, Lord, what you can do. You know what they want you to do, what they need you to do. Now, Lord, do it for them. And I believe they'll come back and say, I praise you, Lord. They won't even have to tell me, Lord. They'll just start praising you for it, Lord. They'll thank you for it, Lord. They'll bless you for it, Lord. And they'll leave this place today feeling like they have worshipped you, Lord. They'll feel like the house was full, even though there's only a few. They'll feel full on the inside. Now bless them, Lord, and bless others, Lord. There are some, Lord, who wanted to come, but they could not come at this time. It wasn't for them to come today, Lord. But in their hearts, they came, Lord, trusting you. Now bless them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. You came in faith. Now go in peace. And the Lord that raised Jesus from the dead will be with you. Amen. God bless you.